Greetings, unsettled souls, and a welcome to the Correct Views. <clears throat> Sam I.B. reporting for the Media Speaks. <clears throat> you can look that up at themediaspeaks.com. Going to go straight into the news immediately because I have a handful of them. I do want to say real quick, make sure you check out the DJ-a-thon that I am doing for Dana Mobley Christ. She is someone who has been felled with cancer, and uh, of course the Charity Connection, which she is a part of, has helped many, many people, and now she herself needs our help. So let's make sure we band together. I will be spinning like nonstop, so you're going to want to hear it in a couple of weekends. Alright friends, this is from Breitbart. This pissed me off. Due to Obamacare, Nation's largest movie theater chain cuts employees' hours. All right, I, I'm not saying that I'm in favor of Obamacare, but I am one of those few libertarians that do believe that health care needs to be available for all people. However, however, that should be implemented by the states and the people in each state should be allowed to choose how it works best for their states and it should have to be voted on by the people of that state. That is what the Constitution says is supposed to happen to issues that are not specifically outlined in the Constitution. That is what it's supposed to do. So don't say I'm against uh, healthcare because I'm actually not. I am against Obamacare. I'm against it terribly for reasons such as these. The only way the federal government should be able to do healthcare, which they shouldn't, would be to make all people insured, no loopholes under any circumstances, done! If the feds can't do that, then the feds need to stay out of it. The other thing I want to say is, if these greedy bastards had given a fair living wage to their employees, then maybe we wouldn't need Obamacare. Okay? Maybe it should cost an extra dollar to go to a movie so that these people can have a decent quality of life. I don't have a problem with that. Regal Entertainment, you're scum. Monday, Regal Entertainment Group, the largest movie theater chain in the country, announced that thousands of employees will have their work hours cut as a direct result of the added cost of the new Obamacare mandates that become effective later this year. No, why don't you who run it take a little bit less money, you greedy swine? Why don't you go ahead and up the price of the movie a dollar and say, you know what, the price of the movie has gone up a dollar because of Obamacare. No, no, you can't do that. You're going to go ahead and, and say the opposite. Well, we're, I'm sorry, well, I'm just going to tell everybody that we're a piece of human filth and scum. And rather than raise the, do raise the price of the movie a dollar, rather than take a little bit less money ourselves, we're going to go ahead and cut your hours. You are garbage people. In a memo to employees, management was blunt to comply with the Affordable Care Act. Regal had to increase our health care budget to cover those newly deemed eligible based on the law's definition of full-time employee. Maybe your full-time employees should already have health insurance! Fox News reports that as a result of cutting employees' work hours, which is of course the same as a pay cut, Full-time Regal managers have resigned in a wave after their hours and paychecks were slashed by as much as 25%. And that's good. I'm glad it's happening to them. I hope it bankrupts them. The manager told FoxNews.com Obamacare has had an unintended consequence of taking food off of his table, mandating businesses to offer health care, and not smashing them for being backstabbing. Mandating businesses to offer health care under threat of debilitating fines does not fix a problem, it creates one, he said. It fosters a new business culture where 30 hours is now considered the maximum in order to avoid paying the higher costs associated with the law. That is why President Obama is an abysmal failure. Abysmal. First of all, you had no business even getting in this. Second of all, these people, and this is where I hear the laugh loud and clear, you won't hear that a lot on this show. 
This is why we're here, because of greedy, filthy people that paid low wages to full-time employees and were not giving health insurance. That's the only reason we got into this mess, is because of people that own something of value, like Regal does, this chain, being greedy, filthy pig scum. Mm. Natural news, 98% of cave hibernating bats have died in Pennsylvania, says biologists. I, I add this here, many of you are like, what do you know about bats for? He's got bats in his belfry. No, listen. The bees were going everywhere, the bees were dying everywhere, and, you know, contingents of people and, and dumbed down America. Oh, that's great, that means I won't get stung as much. Oh. Of course, you know, uh, those uh, with an IQ uh, larger than a pencil have realized that this is going to have severe problems on the ecosystem, but at least it wasn't a higher, uh, higher form. Well, look at this. They serve as a critical role in pollinating crops, killing insects, and fertilizing soil, but their presence throughout the state of Pennsylvania is in a disastrously serious decline. According to a new report by phillybirds.com, 99.99, for you Usher fans, that's almost all of them, 99.99% of bats living in Pennsylvania's second largest bat habitat were recently discovered to be dead, and a cohort of biologists currently studying the issue estimates that a shocking 98% of bats living throughout the entire state of Pennsylvania are now dead as well. That's an extremely high amount of bats. I mean, uh, anybody besides me fish, <clears throat> like in the summer, I'm in Ohio, which, again, for you top 40 fans, that is right next door to Pennsylvania. It really is. Um, you go fishing on the boats, you can see bats flying over all the time. It'll be interesting to see how that affects the area here. Um, and, of course, and think about how many insects they eat in one night. For many generations, tens of thousands of bats have made their home in an old abandoned iron ore mine in the Upper Bucks area of central Pennsylvania. At least six different bat species resided in the mine, which has long been a key hibernation spot for bats during the cold winter months. But a recent inspection of the mine revealed that a mere handful of the approximately 10,000 bats that were believed to have lived there previously are gone now, and most of the few remaining bats are ill with a disease or like, that is likely to kill them. Now, there's a question here. Is it the GMOs getting into the insects that the bats are eating? Is it the pesticides? Is it the cell phone towers confusing the sensory perception of bats? Is it something that we haven't thought of yet? Does it have something to do with the mysterious booms that go on um, and the people don't know what they are? Could it have to do with fracking? We're talking about the ground. These are questions that I've thrown out there that hit me. Loss of bats means influx of insects. Uh, I'm not going to read that. You're just going to have to... Obviously, that's what they eat. Um, so we're going to be looking at a lot more insects as we look at less bats. But I think it's very important for us to remember that that's not that big of a deal. What is a big deal is that this, this problem of mass die-offs of almost entire populations are moving up and up and up the food chain. Um, Prison Planet, Mike Barrett, daily serving of soda increases aggressive prostate cancer risk by 40%. Christelle, my girlfriend, drinks pop like you and I breathe air. I've never seen anything like it. It's, it's almost like her goal is to commit suicide. And I know a lot of people like this. Now, before I'm the pot that's calling the kettle black, I have a weakness for it when I'm drinking. If I'm at a club or I'm at a bar, um, if I'm drinking rum, which I like many times, I will drink it with Coke, obviously. And uh, this isn't good news either. Soda is quite possibly the most vilified food slash beverage on the market and for a good reason. The beverage offers zero nutritional value, all while increasing the risk of countless diseases. But even with everything that we know as a society, soda sales continue upward, largely because of my girlfriend. And so do the number of studies showcasing the negative effects of the popular drink, which she won't hear because she will put cotton in her ears. 
According to one recent study, consuming about one soda per day increases a man's risk of prostate cancer by 40% compared to someone who never touches the beverage. Now again, women don't have a real high risk of prostate cancer. If you believe that this is going through your body, ladies, and it's affecting men's prostate, but it's not doing anything to anything inside of you, you're very likely a Kesha fan. The Swedish study coming from Lund University and recently published in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition focused on the associations between carbohydrates and their food sources in regards to prostate cancer risk. The researchers followed 8,128 men ages 45 to 73 for an average of 15 years. All were reported to be in good health. Overall, it was found that fast-releasing carbohydrates and sugary drinks increased the risk of the most aggressive forms of prostate cancer, and it goes on. But for soda specifically, the researchers found that men who drank 300 milliliters each day, slightly less than one can, don't forget that a can's less than those, those bottles that you get, were more likely to develop the type of prostate cancer which required treatment. And guys, that, that matters, because a lot of times they don't have to go snipping at the jewels unless it's a very aggressive kind. Uh, lead researcher Dr. Isabel Drake commented by saying, among the men who drank a lot of soft drinks and other drinks with added sugar, we saw an increased risk of prostate cancer in and around 40%. Um, I'll tell you what, I still have a soft spot for fast food, but I've done really good with pop. And once again, I can tell you how to do it. Um, you, you stop buying it, for one. And then the only time you drink it is when you're absolutely craving it. Um, I make uh, my living as a DJ. And I DJ in a place where I'm allowed to use the gun, not, not the alcoholic gun, but the gun for pop, uh, orange juice, grape juice, and coffee. Uh, it doesn't come out of the gun. Um, no, on the pop. The only time I do it, if I'm craving one, I get a glass and I pour some pop in. And then I don't touch it again. That is how you quit pop. I've started drinking, I live almost entirely off of life water and vitamin water. Alright guys, this is a story of stories here. Do I support it? Yes, I do. Could this go badly? Yes, it could. InfoWars, a radio host to lead armed march on D.C. July 4th to put government on notice. I am actually in favor of this, I'm not going to lie. <clears throat> I worry about idiots provoking a reaction out of non-violent people. There's no doubt in my mind that this is going to be made up of non-violent people. Radio host and activist Adam Karkish plans to lead an armed march on the Arlington National Cemetery in Virginia, all the way to the White House and back. According to a Facebook event posted by Karkish titled Open Carry March on Washington, he plans to lead a peaceful march July 4th across the Memorial Bridge down Independence Avenue around the Capitol, the Supreme Court, and the White House then peacefully returned to Virginia across the Memorial Bridge. On Monday, uh, it talks about him being on the Alex Jones show, and uh, here's a few quotes. There's a remote chance that there will be violence, and there has been from government before, and I think it should be clear that if anyone involved in this event is approached respectfully by agents of the state, they will submit to arrest without resisting. And it mentions that... You know, if you don't have a gun, you're welcome to show up for solidarity purposes or to film. I say film. By all means, film. Film rooftops, film everywhere. You know, because there weren't any men on rooftops with guns at the Boston bombing, even though we all saw them there. Film everything, guys. If you're going to do this, cover your asses. But there are a lot of us, uh, as long as it remains peaceful, a lot of us Americans support this, and I am one of them. Two things I want to get to before we go, real quick, really fast. Paul Joseph Watson, Alex Jones, calls on World Press to cover Bilderberg 2013. In a nutshell, he is trying to go to the UK to cover Bilderberg, but thinks that he might be forced out for his political views, much the same way that another radio hero is, uh, was Michael Savage. 
He's saying if that happens, he wants everybody to make so much noise about him not going that they make more noise than they would have about him just being allowed to go. And Alex Jones, you had the time to talk to me. And I told you I was making a movie, and you found time in your busy schedule to talk to me. And I am going to say, everyone who listens to the correct views, do me a favor. If they do not allow Alex Jones into the UK, I'm going to make a video about it. And I need every one of you to share it, and share it, and share it, until Facebook warns you that you're sharing it too much. Alex, I will do my best to make the highest stink in the world for you if they don't let you in. Last thing I want to get to, I got something for Harry Reid. Reid tells, oh no, look what I did. D. Lake will love it. He loves when I do that. Reid tells May Day rally, country owes immigrants a permanent solution. Thousands of people gathered downtown Wednesday afternoon to rally in support of immigration reform, then chanted their way down Los Angeles Boulevard and towards Stratosphere while passing vehicles honked horns in support. Supposedly, Harry Reid yep, told the crowd who were waving U.S. flags and wearing red, white, and blue t-shirts, we're going to get this done. Immigrants, you are owed a permanent solution. I agree with Harry Reid and immigrants, illegal. I have a permanent solution for you. Leave, go home, and apply legally. Now, do I think that the Republicans want to make entering the country too restrictive by costing too much? Yes, I do. However, we didn't invite you to stay. And your permanent solution is to leave. Thank you for listening to The Correct Views, friends. Good night. God bless. Thank you for doing so. Please donate to the show if you can. Because if you can, all the money you give me goes back into the show. And uh, once again, I want to thank Barbie Backwoods for paying for last month's uh, Dots Cap of the Month Award. Look her up on Facebook. She's beautiful, guys. Have a good night, friend. God bless, and uh, do me a favor, go to themediaspeaks.com and leave a few comments there as well. See ya.